Hello class, my name is Caitlin Fincham, and for my plant profile, I chose the henna flower, also known as Lasonia inermis. Okay, so history of the henna flower. First used in the Near East and South Asia, henna art is now popular all around the world. Henna use didn't become widespread until the Middle Ages, and legend states that the goddess Parvati, wife of the great god Shiva, used it as a form of decoration in order to charm her husband away from his usual stance of brooding meditation. Now when we're talking about henna art in this slide, we're talking about a product that is formed from the henna plant itself. Now we'll talk about the production of this later on in the presentation, but just keep that in mind. Um, when we're talking about the history of henna art, we're talking about the main product that is made in the world today from the henna flower itself. Scientific name, as stated earlier, is Lasonia inermis. And now we're coming to the chemistry makeup of the plant itself. Um, now I found this on orientjchem.org. They found the uh, compounds of this plant through inspecting the essential oil that was derived from its leaves. So, forgive my pronunciation, but I'll go through these with you. We've got linalool, phytol, aterpenol, eugenol, hexadecanoic acid, and etherphenylphenol. <laughs> and again, that was from orientjchem.org. All right, and now the distribution of the plant. I'm going to take a minute to describe this picture for you, because as I was talking about in the first slide, all right, we were talking about the main product that is made from this plant, and that is the henna ink, the henna dye, or what they use to make temporary tattoos with. Now, all these products are made from this powder here. So they take the leaves, shown right here, the leaves from the plant, and then they grind them up into this sort of powder. And from this powder is how they make the dye or the ink. And, you know, it depends on who you're asking on how exactly they make it. But from what I've read, they mix it with lemon juice or oil or, you know, something, some sort of liquid base to make it more of like a paste so that it can be applied to the skin. Right? And here you can see there's three different tones of it. There's a dark, a medium, and a light. Okay? So now we're going to get back into the distribution of it here. <clears throat> India, Pakistan, Yemen, Morocco, Egypt, Iran, and Sudan are the main growers and exporters of the henna. Only half of the 15,000 metric tons of leaves produced in Pakistan each year is sold abroad. The rest is consumed within Pakistan itself. The demand for henna has certainly grown in Europe and North America, however. About five metric tons are imported into the UK each year. What societies use the plant? Well, for over 5,000 years, henna has been a symbol of good luck, health, and sensuality in the, in the Arab world. And in India, it's been used since at least 700 AD for decorating hands and feet. They use that decoration, by the way, mainly during marriages or sorts of ceremonies or rituals is what they use the hand painting for. But today it's become more of a trend throughout the world for people to just use it because it looks pretty. And it does wash off eventually. Antimicrobial preparations containing henna have been patented in the UK. So they're using it there too. And lastly, the henna tree is used for medicine in Swahili community as well. What is the plant reputed to act on? Well, it slows heart rate, reduces blood pressure, reduces muscle spasms, fights inflammation, helps fever and pain, acts as a sedative. And in laboratory studies, two compounds extracted from henna, called lawson and isoflumogen, have shown anti-cancer activity and have protected sickle cells against membrane damage. And how is it used? Well, we're showing you a few pictures over here. We've got the essential oil. And then this is what they use the hair dye for. It's actually a solid compound that they mix with some sort of liquid. I believe they use water. And then it turns into kind of like a pasty, muddy type substance that you put over your hair to dye it. 
And then, of course, over here, some more hand and feet temporary tattoos. So again, they're using that for dyeing hair and textiles, essential oils and perfumes. Um, compounds are extracted for medicines. we got temporary tattoos and even a medium for artwork. Present day research, well from 1998 to 2013, research into new natural dye sources along with eco-friendly, robust, and cost-effective technologies for their processing and application have greatly aided in widening the scope of natural dyes in various applications. And the hair dye is becoming more and more popular in American culture as well. Thank you.